Hi everyone, this is Dr. Paul. I want to welcome you to the presentation I call The Power of 2.5. I'm referring to the 2.5 pH water that you have available from your Enagic processor, if you have any model other than the Sunus. Most of you know that 2.5 pH water is strong acid water, as that's the name given to it by Enagic. In research, however, this is called electrolyzed oxidizing water, or EO water. There are a few other names for it, but we'll refer to it here as 2.5 or EO water or electrolyzed oxidizing water for the purposes of this presentation. Here's what you're going to learn. Number one, what EO water really is and how it works. You'll also learn how EO water is made and what the requirements are for its production. You'll also learn that there is a commercial product on the market that will do the same thing as your 2.5 water and is available to anyone. You probably didn't know that. But I'll show you the price structure so you'll understand what huge value you have in your Enagic processor. And finally, we'll talk about protocols and the fact that there aren't any. When you understand what EO water does and how it works, You'll leave this presentation knowing when, where, and how to use it properly. Once people know this, they often wonder how they ever lived without it. I also want to give you fair warning. I'm going to show you some medical and surgical images that aren't for the faint of heart. If you get squeamish or ill over viewing such images, please close your eyes or turn off your monitor and just keep listening to the rest of this presentation. The rest of you are going to be fascinated. The only way I could really help you understand the power of 2.5 water is to show you some things that can happen to you if you don't use it. Many of you out there have been told it's good for killing germs, but in my discussions with people around the world, I've found that very few people really understand the true value of 2.5 water. Let me start by telling you my story. The person who introduced me to Kangen water had several people coming to her house to get the normal Kangen water to drink. I spoke with many of them and I found that they were receiving great benefits from it. I'm a dental surgeon and I understood the power of placebo, so I figured that may have been playing a factor. Their comments interested me a little bit, but what really grabbed my attention, and I mean grabbed my attention, was the day my friend accidentally cut her arm in the kitchen. She went to her purse and pulled out a little spray bottle and sprayed it on the cut. I asked her what she was doing and she said, killing germs. I asked her, what's in the bottle? She said, water. I said, pull the other one. Water doesn't kill germs. She told me, this one does. They use it in hospitals in Japan to kill MRSA and they don't have any problems with it over there. What she didn't know was that I was medically trained in Australia, where we had the best of all worlds. We used the same textbooks as are used in the United States, but we also had education from Europe, Japan, South Africa, England, and other places from around the world. Why had I never heard of this water that could kill MRSA? Now I was intrigued about this water processor next to her kitchen sink. I did what I do best, and that's research the research. I'm kind of nosy that way. For those of you who don't know what MRSA is, it's an acronym for Methicillin-Resistant Staphylococcus aureus, or Golden Staph. It's also called Multidrug-Resistant Staph aureus. It's bad news, and it runs rampant in enclosed environments like hospitals, schools, jails, and the like. I warned you previously, here come the medical pictures. It often starts by looking like a whitish skin lesion and maybe a patch of pimples, but it can abscess and eat holes in your body. Like the name says, there are a lot of antibiotics and drugs that cannot stop this infection. Sometimes they even have to cut out entire chunks of your body just to stop the infection from spreading. Trust me, you don't want to be one of these people. What if this woman had had electrolyzed oxidizing water to put on her MRSA infection prior to getting this much hold in her body? Wouldn't that have been cool? She would have saved herself a lot of grief, a lot of pain, and a huge hole that will require several surgeries to look semi-normal again. So here I was in my friend's house, hearing that there was a water that could stop it before it got hold in a body. After doing a lot of research and keeping my eye on what's going on in the world, I knew we had to create a movement 
create a change in the way the world sees the treatment of infections. I know that may seem like a huge task, but after you see what I'm going to show you today, I think you'll be on board too. Why is it called electrolyzed oxidizing water? The word electrolyze means to break apart using electricity. The word oxidation means to mix with oxygen and has to do with the loss of electrons. Let me briefly explain so we're on the same page. You may have heard of the words reduction and oxidation. You might have seen them combined into the word redox or heard the phrase redox reaction. To give us some perspective, let me note that the Kangen water you drink is reduced water. It has an abundance of electrons that it transfers to us to help us thrive and have increased energy. Oxidation, on the other hand, takes away electrons and is related to the substance that is breaking down. It's what happens when a fire burns and destroys whatever it is burning, but it releases a lot of energy in other forms. It's also what happens when your blood sugar is oxidized and releases energy to give us life. So not all oxidation is bad. The transfer of electrons often takes from one substance and give energy or life to another. So now when we talk about electrolyzed oxidizing water, the subject of this presentation, we're referring to water that takes electrons from living things and lowers their chances of living. This is especially important when you're talking about single-celled organisms like bacteria, viruses, fungi, etc. We want them dead so they won't do us harm. If you still have any questions about oxidation and reduction, please see our companion video entitled Oxidation Reduction Made Easy. Let's get back to why this 2.5 EO water is so important. Do you remember the story about Amy Copeland? She was in the news a lot during 2012. She's a 21-year-old young woman at the time, and she and her friends had made a zip line over a river. While she was crossing the river, the zip line broke and she fell and cut her leg badly. In that river water were streptococcus bacteria that are known to be really nasty. She was taken to the emergency room where they cleaned the wound, stitched her, and sent her home. Within the next one to two days, she was back in the emergency room with extreme pain, swelling, fever, and was a very sick woman. This is the picture from those few days later. She was diagnosed with a very serious infection called necrotizing fasciitis. The bacteria invades body tissue so rapidly that amputation is the treatment of choice in order to stop the infection and save your life. The doctors had to start cutting on Amy, just like you saw in the belly of that woman previously with MRSA. In this case, however, over time, the infection spread to other parts of her body. She eventually had to have amputated her leg, her other foot, both hands, and part of her abdomen. The only real chance you have of stopping necrotizing fasciitis is in the very early stages, when you may not even know that's what it is. Once necrotizing fasciitis gets into you, even this EO water can't stop it because it can't get in direct contact with the bacteria it would kill if it could. Don't you wonder what might have happened had they irrigated the wound on that first day in the emergency room with EO water? Unfortunately, it's not part of most emergency room treatment regimens. You might think injuries are the only thing that can lead to this kind of serious infection. You would be wrong. You might have seen this woman in the news in 2012 as well. A healthy woman ready to have her child goes in to give birth and comes out with no limbs. She also suffered a necrotizing fasciitis infection that happened during the act of childbirth from a streptococcus infection. And do you know that those simple strep bacteria are almost identical to the ones you get when you have strep throat? Most people think of these kind of bacteria as something for which you go to the doctor who prescribes you antibiotics. Can you imagine her shock when she went in to give birth and came out with a healthy baby but no arms with which to take care of her? Here is another story that has a much better ending but a horrible middle. You see this vibrant young couple getting ready to have twins? A short while later she has healthy twins, but in the process contracts a case of necrotizing fasciitis. The usual treatment was followed, with pieces of her body removed to try and stop the spread of the infection. 
In this case, I would say she was quite fortunate. The question is, could something have been done to prevent this at the time of birth? And if you think that limbs are the only things susceptible to necrotizing fasciitis, think again. When it gets in your face, literally, it totally changes your life. Your face is a representation of who you really are and how you present yourself to the world. There is hope. In fact, I want you to hear of a critically important success story from Dr. David Alley, Director of Cardiothoracic and Endovascular Surgery at the Cardiovascular Institute of the South. Hear how he used electrolyzed oxidizing water to save his own son's life. Two weeks ago I had a, a uh, really a, a, a life and a mind opening experience uh, from the healthcare field that had hit home, one of my family members. Uh, 17-year-old, healthy son, twins actually, both had their wisdom teeth taken out. Next morning, uh, one of my twins woke up and he had a little swelling on the left side of his face. Uh, the, the orthodontist appropriately said it's probably just some post-operative swelling, shouldn't be a problem. Statistically, that was probably correct. And really put some ice on it and nothing, uh, nothing else to do. Well, later that night, uh, evidently the swelling got worse. He began to vomit have severe fevers and develop swelling uh, that my ex-wife describes uh, all of a sudden it looked like his left eye was beginning to close he couldn't breathe took him to the emergency room which was appropriate and they sat for several hours she told me before he, he could get seen she says in the four hours that they were sitting she could see his face rapidly uh, closing down as far as edema and swelling redness about his neck the bottom line is is that that he almost uh, under, underwent a respiratory arrest at that time and uh, he was seen finally and uh, was admitted immediately to the hospital, put in the intensive care unit and started on high dose intravenous antibiotics and the, the ENT specialist came out late to see him that night, was managed in the ICU and a diagnosis of necrotizing fasciitis was made. Necrotizing fasciitis is a tremendous infection that it can occur anywhere in the body. Most of the time it occurs in the lower limbs and if it occurs in the head and neck area, it, it is associated with mortality rates. That's death. As high as 30 to 40 percent because the, the infection is so rapid that uh, it can't be controlled. This turns into what's called gas gangrene and it is a terrible, terrible infection. This is what my 17-year-old son was going through 48 hours after a wisdom tooth was taken out, an asymptomatic wisdom tooth with no infection. The ENT people on Sunday uh, emergently took him to the operating room and made a very large incision upon his neck. This is one of the ways you try to control necrotizing fasciitis, to debride any tissue and any abscess. I was told that the x-rays showed no, no abscess, but they were compelled to have to go and explore this, which was appropriate. He had to go on a ventilator uh, to protect his airway, and over the next 24 hours, it just continued to get worse. He required another intraoral operation. He, his blood pressure was low. He was developing sepsis. Uh, High-dose intra intravenous antibiotics were not controlling a local infection, a local sepsis that was occurring in the left side of his face, uh, as I presume because I was on my way there, that it was all within the cheek itself. Uh, my recommendation at that time, uh, as a surgeon and having knowledge of uh, this kind of a problem and also knowledge of wound care, I spoke to the physician and said, we need to get him some local therapy to help control this and I strongly suggest that we use microsin or dermison. Well I have had a years of experience with dermison in use from head to toe on my patients especially in limb salvage work. I don't see necrotizing fasciitis. Thank goodness most physicians don't see it commonly but when it occurs it again it is something that cannot be controlled. Well the physicians there certainly didn't know what dermison was. Uh, it was not on formulary. So I'm suggesting a, a life-saving maneuver on my son over the phone as I'm trying to get an emergency flight there. And they would love to have used it because they had no way of controlling it. But we were unable to. I 
made urgent calls to my office uh, and actually had overnighted four gallons of Dermison that I have for my own personal use in my office shipped to uh, Orlando Hospital. Uh, it luckily arrived just a little bit before I did and over, over the phone I'm instructing uh, massive irrigation orally and uh, externally and the, the wound externally I don't think was the problem it was all an intraoral sepsis very difficult to get to they were left they had left drains in the oral cavity but there's an endotracheal tube there also so in my mind's eye there was a, lo a loculated uh, necrotizing fasciitis in his oral cavity that was going on they were so uncomfortable with this and it was was progressing so rapidly that the physician in Orlando made a very good decision and that was to air med my son to the University of Florida in Gainesville I flew simultaneously to uh, Gainesville they irrigated my son by my recommendations uh, on the way over and for the next six hours uh, when he got there so he had, had exposure to the dermison now for about 12 hours by the time that I actually got there and he arrived there and was observed by the uh, ENT specialist at the University of Gainesville. Uh, a decision was made to continue this irrigation uh, and I irrigated it myself that night when I got there and he was uh, taken to the operating room there for the first time uh, uh, early in the morning the next day. So this is about 24 hours of irrigation with the dermison. My first visualization of my son uh, didn't look as bad as I had thought. I saw pictures that my ex-wife had taken so in that 12 hours in which I hadn't seen him, but the dermison had been used, it was already working. His, his infection was being controlled. Uh, he was feeling better. He was on a ventilator, though, uh, appropriately so. And we continued those irrigations. The ENT specialist from uh, Gainesville took him to the operating room to, to, to breathe things. And he came out of the operating room and he said, uh, David, he said, amazingly, it didn't look that bad in there. Uh, I believe this stuff is working. Uh, Within the next 12 hours, uh, the swelling was down. Uh, he was waking up from the sedation. Uh, the edema about the airway and the neck was being controlled. And also the redness, the erythema, the necrotizing fasciitis that, that was going on. There was not purulent drainage. Things were being cleaned up. So I actually have a picture of him that I could compare to. And uh, what I can tell you is that at that point, what I saw was dramatically different than just 24 hours prior and uh, within 12 hours from that time we made a decision to extubate him, get him off the ventilator, continue these irrigations and so now 24 hours after the, the, the irrigations we were getting him off the ventilator and 48 hours after the irrigations both externally and intraorally he's off the ventilator, he's sitting up, he's talking with us and an amazing turnaround over that period of time. Over the next 48 hours, uh, we did continue these irrigations. Uh, a vac, wound vac, was placed externally. Uh, the swelling had gone down dramatically. Uh, vision, uh, all of these things were, were back close to normal. Uh, his, uh, the diameter, I would say, of the cheek itself had decreased down 50% the inflammatory tissue, everything there uh, was starting to respond. We had control of the local sepsis. The necrotizing fasciitis had been stopped in its track. Uh, I just got off my, the, the phone with my son. He has a wound vac on right now. The wound is now 60% decreased. He's still in the hospital. This is now nine days. He'll be discharged on Monday. So this was a uh, eye-opening uh, experience from me not only medically but also uh, family wise and I have a son who is thankful. Did you hear all that? Here is a doctor who had at least four gallons of this Dermison on hand which is made by the Oculus company whose main product is Microsyn. Dr. Alley knew how to use this Microsyn product to save his own son's life. His son was living with his ex-wife and that's why he was in another city. When Dr. Ali finally got there, did you hear how long they had to irrigate? Over 12 hours in an attempt to try and stop this infection. It's a good thing he had four gallons of the stuff. 
It saved his son's life and turned the life-threatening infection around in just 12 hours. That is huge when you were trying to stop necrotizing fasciitis at that late stage of the game. I showed you this video because I wanted you to understand how powerful this Microsyn Dermison is. Dermison is just one of the names of this product called Microsyn. They offer it in several different markets and countries. The one you can buy over the counter is called Puricin. You might think I am promoting Microsyn, which I am not. However, I'm certainly not disparaging it either. If I didn't have access to my own electrolyzed oxidizing water from my Enagic machine and I had a serious wound, I would absolutely find Puricin in a pharmacy and use it on my wound. It's an awesome product. If you don't have access to your own EO water, then get Puricin and use it, please. Many of you have seen this article floating around the internet or on Facebook. Super oxidized water kills bacteria. Dr. Gutierrez is the CEO of Oculus who makes Microsyn and all of their derivatives and they have a heavy marketing arm. It's really interesting what he says about this product. He says, I don't know of any resistance to this solution. So far it will kill any kind of bacteria, mycobacteria, spores, fungi and viruses. What he didn't say in this quote is that it is harmless to humans. Isn't that interesting? There was a very interesting news story that came out several years ago. Take a listen. A Bay Area company may have a solution to the troubling and growing problem of drug-resistant infections. It's what some people are calling miracle water, an antiseptic with some very special properties. KTPU Health and Science Editor John Fowler is here with the details. John? Well, this is very new, just the beginning steps on what may be a promising path to a major medical advance. In the Sonoma County town of Petaluma, a small biotech company may have a startling solution to the stubborn problem of infections. Literally, it's like taking a needle and popping a balloon. Uh, that's what it does to, to bacteria. It's like a hit and run effect. You go kill the, the bugs, but don't kill the, the tissue. It's water with a secret. A non-toxic, non-stinging, non-irritating antiseptic, the first of its kind. It's called Microsyn superoxidized water with sterilizing oxychlorine in a patented solution now just beginning clinical trials here in the US but already approved and marketed under a variety of names in 23 other countries in those countries we have approvals as an antimicrobial solution as an antiseptic so the solution has been tested in different types of wounds the company says worldwide half a million people have been treated with microsin and that patients, especially burn patients, leave hospitals as much as two months earlier with reduced scars, fewer amputations, and a lot less cost. And crucially, the solution kills even drug-resistant microbes. It has a widespread um, effectiveness against all bacteria, including those which are resistant to typical antibiotics. Mid-Peninsula wound surgeon Dr. Dirk Bauman is not affiliated with Oculus. He says his early clinical trial shows Dermacin also kills fungi and viruses on contact and helps skin heal. It allows more oxygen and more blood flow into the wounds so that it also uh, speeds healing. The technology has application way beyond wound care. This is, can be used in Department of Defense. Um, against anthrax, you can use it in upper respiratory infection, people who suffer from sinusitis. Possibly the biggest potential use is for, to, for disinfecting drinking water. Once that is perfected, it could save millions of lives every year lost to dysentery. The company hopes to have its first FDA approval in about two years. Wow, so that was an old story because now more than 30 clinical trials later and multiple peer-reviewed publications they have used Microsyn to treat at least three and a half million people without a single reported side effect to the FDA. Are you kidding me? When you can have death of every microorganism it's ever been tested against and you have pure safety, no side effects, no harm, talk about the Hippocratic Oath on steroids, it's awesome and here's the proof. Later they got their FDA approvals. These are the United States approvals. You see it's been approved for management of exuding wounds such as ulcers. Exuding wounds are weeping or pussy wounds. You also see it's approved for the debridement of wounds, ulcers and burns. Debridement is the medical term for cleaning out a wound. 
That's what you have to do when you get road rash. There is also FDA approval for the management of skin irritation, itch, and pain relief. I've experienced that myself after my own oral surgery. And would you believe it, they also got approval for the treatment of atopic dermatitis and radiation dermatitis. Radiation dermatitis is the burn that you get on your skin when you are treated for cancer with radiation. Do you realize that you can give electrolyzed oxidizing water from your very own Enagic machine to your friend who has had radiation treatment and can give them some relief? What a great gift! So the question is, is this Microsyn worth it? At $2,125 per gallon? Wow! You might be shocked at that price. That's about the same amount of money it costs for a visit to the emergency room before they do any diagnosis or treatment on you. So is that worth it to you? Let me ask another question. Why was Microsyn invented in the first place? It's been known for well over 25 years that electrolyzed oxidizing water had these incredible powers to kill microorganisms. Even according to the information put out by the Oculus Company, they acknowledged that there was worldwide interest by the medical community in using electrolyzed oxidizing water to kill bacteria and other microorganisms. The problem was that typical electrolyzed oxidizing water has a very low pH. It is very acidic. This would cause oxidation or rusting and corrosion of metal surgical instruments and those things are way too expensive to be cleaning them with a solution that will destroy them. So even though the medical community loved the efficacy and safety of killing germs with electrolyzed oxidizing water, they lost interest in researching it further because they couldn't afford the cost of the damage to their metal instruments. So along comes the Oculus Company, and they figured out how to buffer the EO water so it has neutral pH. It's still oxidizing, and it steals the electrons, and that is one of its mechanisms by which it kills microorganisms. But it's pretty darn expensive. And notice the packaging. Microsyn is the original product. Puricyn is their product aimed at humans that is sold over the counter. They market a couple or more different products to veterinary clinics. One says eye wash, and one says wound and infection treatment. Well, put a different lid on the bottle, and I guess you've got a different product. It's expensive stuff. Here's how expensive. This is a screenshot from Amazon.com. I looked up Puricin, and this gives a good sample of prices. If you buy it by the smallest bottle size, you will be paying the equivalent of $2,125 per gallon. If you move on up to the 8-ounce size, it drops to $449 per gallon. And if you buy the 16 ounce size, or one eighth of a gallon, you, you will pay only $271 per gallon. So, is that worth it? What's your arm, or your leg, or your life worth to you or someone you love after seeing those cases of necrotizing fasciitis? And believe it or not, all of these products are just electrolyzed oxidizing water. So what can the 2.5 pH water do that comes right out of your Enagic machine? It's been shown to be successful and used to improve peripheral circulation, to treat diabetic gangrene, wounds, and ulcers. It works the same as Microsyn. It's been used on skin conditions such as atopic dermatitis, psoriasis, seborrhea, and the like. Anything that causes a microscopic break in the skin will have bacteria invade. It's not that bacteria might go in, they will go in if you have a break in the surface of your skin, which is a great barrier to protect your inner body. Using EO water for skin includes many severe rashes and dermatitis. How do you know that the 2.5 pH water coming out of your Enagic machine will do all these things? How do you know it will kill all of the microorganisms it has ever been tested against? And by the way, it is not toxic to us or our pets. The SD501 machine made by Enagic will produce waters in different pH ranges from 11.5 on the high end to 2.5 on the low end. They've tested these machines by using both 2.5 and 2.6 pH waters. They tested them against sodium hypochlorite or bleach, which is what most people consider to be an excellent disinfectant. And they even tested them against benzoconium chloride, which is used as a disinfectant in many diaper rash creams. With all of that, 
They tested it against what I call the Hollywood bugs. These are the ones that you know about because you hear about them in the news occasionally. Hepatitis, tuberculosis, HIV, food poisoning bacteria like Salmonella, MRSA, E. coli, even fungal infections like Candida and athlete's foot. Do you start to see how many microorganisms this has been tested against? The strong acid water by Enagic, which is 2.5 pH electrolyzed oxidizing water, kills 99.999% of bacteria. In medical terms, folks, that means everything. And it killed faster than bleach. As the pH went to 2.6, it killed most of the bacteria. And as the pH went to 2.7, with typical electrolyzed oxidizing water, you get less and less of a broad range kill. At pH 3.0 and above, there is very little kill for a typical EO water. The general rule is, the lower the pH, the better the kill rate, with 2.5 being the ideal. The reason why Oculus created such an amazing product with its Microsyn is that they were able to stabilize it and get it to a neutral pH so it didn't harm surgical instruments as badly. Can the electrolyzed oxidizing water from your Enagic machine be used in medical clinical settings? Well, I'm a dental surgeon, so let me tell you about my business. When you go to a dentist, we have water spraying out of the drills and that little instrument we call a triple syringe with which we squirt water and air into your mouth. The water lines that lead up to these are filled with a biofilm. Think of it as pond scum. The good news is most of those bacteria are harmless, thank goodness, and it's the same pond scum that is in the pipes leading to your own house. However, when you're at the dentist, you very often have bleeding going on somewhere in your mouth, even if it's just from having your teeth cleaned. Why would we want to spray that pond scum directly into your bloodstream? We wouldn't, but believe it or not, some of the bacteria in that biofilm are not harmless. In Japan, at the Hiroshima University, they did an experiment where they flushed these water lines with electrolyzed oxidizing water and found that the bacterial count dropped for about a day and a half and then rose back to normal pond scum levels by day six. Wouldn't it be nice if your dentist was washing out their water line with EO water? There was a study done on 10 of the most opportunistic pathogens that invade when you go to the hospital. This is like when you go in with a broken leg and come out with a MRSA infection. These are the bugs that get you while you're down. In this study, they used electrolyzed oxidizing water against all of these bugs and their conclusion was, the electrolyzed oxidizing water completely inactivates all of the bacterial strains, with the exception of vegetative cells and spores of bacilli, which need five minutes to be killed. That last part is very important. Everything was killed within five minutes. This test was only done at 30 seconds and five minutes, but most of the other studies I've read have had bacteria killed within two minutes at the outside. Do you see where this research starts to tell you how you can use this water in your own life? Finally, let's take a look at this interesting study from the Tohoku University School of Dentistry. They were testing various machines that made electrolyzed oxidizing water. I want to point out one thing from this study that helps you understand how the electrolyzed oxidizing water is made. You see where I've circled in red that it always takes about five one-hundredths of one percent of a dangerous chemical called sodium chloride. Well, I'm being facetious about calling it a dangerous chemical. Sodium chloride is salt, just like you put on your food. You might even see competitors to Enagic marketing on the internet, making statements that the Enagic machines use a dangerous chemical, sodium chloride. They're just playing on people's fear of chemical names that they don't understand. The point I want to make here is that it is not possible to make electrolyzed oxidizing water without the use of a chlorine salt, even though it's in such a very tiny amount as five one hundredths of one percent. In the agricultural world, where they make humongous ionizers, they use potassium chloride. For humans, we use sodium chloride, but you can't make effective EO water without a chlorine salt. Remember. Don't let the chemical names bother you because all things are chemicals, including water. There's an entire website that's really scary dedicated to the chemical dihydrogen monoxide. Think about it. That simply is the long way of saying H2O. 
If you want to check it out, it's at dhmo.org. But remember, that site is a spoof, so don't get scared by what you read there. Quit being scared of chemical names if you don't know what they mean. Everything is a chemical and can have a long chemical compound name. I hope you found that little diversion useful, but let's get back to the study. You'll have to pardon the grammar of the translation from Japanese to English, but the point of the study was in the summary, where they said, EO water is always produced by the same principle, but have all kinds of characteristics depending on the type of machine, with different diaphragms, electrodes, voltage, and electric current. Its metal corrosive nature and safety against organism are some of the problems to be solved, but they also seem to be dependent on the type of machine. You see, there are other machines out there that will make electrolyzed oxidizing water, but it is about the effectiveness of killing microorganisms that determines which are the superior machines. With that in mind, let me ask you these two questions. Why are Enagic machines used in Japanese hospitals, and why are only Enagic machines recommended by the Japanese Association for the Prevention of Adult Diseases? You see, all of these highly trained medical people who can make choices based on effectiveness have all done the homework for you. Remember what the study said, the characteristics of the water also seem to be dependent on the type of machine. In a minute, I'm going to discuss some of the many uses of electrolyzed oxidizing water in your life. But I want to add one more piece of education for you so you really understand what's going on here. It will help you choose how to apply it. Let me make it clear that it is not just the low pH of 2.5 that causes the death of microorganisms. Otherwise, the two most popular cola drinks on the market would be great for cleaning wounds. And they're not. It's always about the mix or blend of compounds in a liquid that matters, along with its physical properties in how it responds to other compounds it comes in contact with. Here's the reason why you can't make successfully bug-killing EO water without a chlorine salt. It's because the act of electrolyzing, or splitting apart, a very minor salt solution creates a series of chlorine compounds, such as hypochlorous acid, chlorine and chlorides, and even hydrogen peroxide, and hydroxyl radicals are in the mix. These are toxic substances, but they are in very, very small amounts, so they will hurt microorganisms, but won't hurt huge organisms with trillions of cells like humans and animals. All of these toxic substances are known for their oxidizing or electron stealing ability. Experiments have been done in an attempt to determine which, if any, of these compounds plays the bigger role in killing microorganisms. Suffice it to say that there is no single compound that works alone while the other compounds don't. It's about the mix of the chlorine compounds, hydrogen peroxide, and the low pH that makes it possible to create EO water from a small machine that you can have in your home. If you remember the research I showed you before, their explanation is that all those compounds seem to synergistically exert virucidal and microbicidal effects by balancing under competitive acidic conditions. Enagic simply has the most successful design and top quality materials in their machines that optimize all these factors to give a form of EO water that actually does what it says it does. Some people ask me, if this water is so oxidizing and will kill every microorganism it has ever been tested against, why doesn't it hurt humans and animals? Well, that's a great question, and here's my explanation. Think of a small burn or falling down and scraping your knee. You will have hundreds of thousands or even millions of cells die. Why didn't you die? Well, because you are a multi-cell organism with up to 100 trillion cells who can afford the death of all these cells from the small injury. You have a mechanism to replace them by the act of healing. In fact, our bodies were designed to replace old cells with new ones all the time. That's what the exfoliation of skin cells is all about, and people use loofahs and other body scrubbers to actually help this process along. They purposely scrub cells from their body in order to have healing and replacement occur so they have rejuvenated and younger looking skin. Think about this. Oxidizing is oxidizing. Electrons are stolen away. 
if you think that by putting electrolyzed oxidizing water on your body you have a magical solution that can tell the difference between a bacteria and your own cells so it knows which one to kill think again oxidizing is oxidizing it's just that your body is made to heal from these small injuries in surgery tissue is cut away often to promote healing that's how they treat all those infections of necrotizing fasciitis when you use electrolyzed oxidizing water on your body of course there will be cell damage at the point of contact and it has been shown that this actually promotes healing think of it as using a loofah on your skin or even within your wounds to help promote new cell growth healing is far more complex than that but this is a good analogy to remember research on the use of EO water for serious wound healing backs up this idea and in fact Dr. Horst Filzer uses it all the time in his advanced wound clinic now that you know more details about how this EO water works can you think of some ways you could use it in your own daily life have you ever had something like this happen to your child or grandchild did you get a very uneasy feeling not knowing how clean that toilet really is if you cleaned it with one of dozens of chemicals you might have killed the germs since very few of these chemicals kill all bacteria but almost certainly you will have left a toxic chemical residue behind imagine your relief when you know you have been using electrolyzed oxidizing water to kill germs and you've also left no dangerous chemicals behind so you can pay these kinds of prices for electrolyzed oxidizing water or you can have one of these in your home or business so you can make as much EO water as you could ever want whenever you want all for the whopping cost of around 50 cents a gallon microbe killing EO water on tap that kills every microorganism on which it's ever been tested and in the most affordable way you could ever ask for I want to remind you though that this is the very EO water that the medical community was very interested in years ago because they knew of its effectiveness but they lost interest because it is corrosive to metals that matters when you're dealing with expensive surgical instruments this is a very aggressive water and it will take on electrons from whatever non-inert things it touches oh and by the way there are other types of waters that are also aggressive in other ways such as distilled water reverse osmosis water and most bottled waters believe it or not they are horrible for your health yes I said bottled water is horrible for your health look for our video called aggressive water to learn more about the damage these can cause if you use metal instruments in your home or small business like a restaurant for example just remember this corrosive effect of the EO water and don't leave it on them too long the kill time for most microbugs is between 30 seconds and 2 minutes therefore you can't just spray it on and immediately wipe it off and think that it killed all the bugs most are killed within seconds but it takes a little time for some types of microbugs to die specifically some related to food poisoning so the way to deal with this in a practical way many people just spray on the EO water and then let it air dry that seems to be quite adequate I promised you at the beginning that you would understand when and how to use this 2.5 pH EO water there are really no protocols on how to use this because it's not a drug and it's not harmful if used in the ways we've described except for the microbugs of course because it knocks them out dead I do want to emphasize that the ideas mentioned here should only be used in the same way you would treat other small injuries at home if you have a severe injury or illness please use your common sense and please go to an appropriate health care provider right away after I showed you all those gross pictures of necrotizing fasciitis and MRSA you probably want to know how you can avoid those at all cost well here's my recommendation if you get a cut or injury that breaks your skin in any way I recommend liberally applying 2.5 pH EO water to the area for two minutes then cover up the wound with a bandage if your injury is more severe you may need to liberally apply EO water two or three times per day because in between new bacteria will invade your wound this also applies to all open wounds severe skin lesions such as psoriasis etc remember I said there is no protocol and this won't hurt you so apply it whenever you feel it is necessary you don't have to worry about cost or damage to your body 
There is one exception to that, however. That is your teeth. Your teeth are made of minerals, and they will absolutely dissolve, never to come back if you give them too much application of acid. EO water is acid. I'm certainly qualified to give advice about this since I'm a dental surgeon, but there's a little info on teeth that comes in handy. The mineral in the outer layer of your teeth is in a relative state of flux. When you eat any simple carbs, your plaque bacteria will produce lactic acid. When the pH at the teeth surface drops below 5.5, your teeth mineral will dissolve away. That happens at every meal because of the simple carbohydrates you most likely eat, even if you're a strict vegetarian. It's not just sugar that's the bad guy here. This happens with any simple carbohydrates that your plaque bacteria can metabolize. The good news is that outer layer of your tooth will remineralize when you are not eating, as long as you haven't taken too much mineral away. The minerals to build up your tooth again come from your saliva. As long as you don't dissolve too much of your enamel, your body will fix the damage. If you think about it, a cavity in your tooth is nothing more than an overdrawn mineral balance. Now that you know this, you can use common sense in the application of 2.5 water for your dental health. I strongly recommend the use of EO water two times a day in your mouth. I've seen a lot of so-called protocols being spread around, but now that you know these facts, you can use a little common sense. And let's try to make this simple so you will actually do it. Here's how I'd put these facts together. After brushing and flossing, simply rinse your mouth for 30 seconds with a large mouthful of 2.5 water and no longer than 30 seconds. Swish hard and fast so the water touches everything. You will be losing mineral during this time since 2.5 pH water is 1,000 times more acidic than the 5.5 pH threshold at which you start to lose tooth enamel. Don't worry though, this short duration will kill all the bacteria and microbugs that occur in the mouth but won't do permanent damage to your enamel but you do have to raise the pH back up above 5.5 as soon as you can. So the next step is to rinse your mouth for another 30 seconds with any of the alkaline waters, pH 8.5 to 9.5. This will bring the pH of the teeth back up above the 5.5 pH where the enamel stops demineralizing from the acid. The third step is to look at yourself in the mirror and smile because you just did a wonderful thing for your dental health and it was as simple as possible. We've talked about the body and surgical instruments and the many uses of this EO water. I want to briefly mention food. Electrolyzed oxidizing water has killed every organism on which it's been tested and that includes food microbes. You can wash all of your produce and meats in EO water to make sure it's clean especially because it seems to be that the microbugs related to food poisoning can take up to two minutes to kill. Remember that this water kills by contacting the bugs. This water will kill all surface bacteria it can contact, but please don't take this to the extreme. If you hear of an outbreak of E. coli or some other tainted food, please throw it away and don't take unnecessary risks. You can never guarantee that these kind of outbreak bacteria are not deep enough in the food that the EO water can't get to them. I'm not a food scientist, so I can't tell you all of the details you might want to know, but I am a common sense doctor, and I don't believe in taking unnecessary risks. So if you know your food is tainted, please just throw it out. There is one more use of this water that bears mentioning, and that is the treatment of acne and some other skin disorders. Since bacteria is involved with acne, isn't it nice to know that you have a water with which you can wash your face and kill them? Many have found it very helpful to also use the opposite of EO water, which is the 11.5 pH strong alkaline water made by your Enagic machine. I will mention that the 11.5 pH water is the opposite of EO water. That means 11.5 donates electrons and has a very large anti-inflammatory effect. It can be used on the outside of the body to reduce swelling, pain, and other symptoms related to inflammation. It can also be used to emulsify oil, and so it's great to use on your face before using the EO water. The 11.5 removes oil first to allow better access for the 2.5 EO water to kill those bacteria. 
We've heard great reports from cosmetologists using the various waters from their Enagic machines on their clients. Look for a separate video on the amazing 11.5. There's one final question we get asked a lot, and that is, how long does EO water last after it's made? Well, that's a great question, and unfortunately, there is no absolutely definitive answer, because the chemistry of the water can be affected by so many things, such as the source water going into your machine, or is your filter working properly, or is it time to get a replacement? After the EO water is created, it is affected adversely by heat, vibration, and light. We therefore recommend keeping it in an opaque bottle or store it in a dark cupboard, and glass works better than plastic to hold the EO water properties longer. Here are some guidelines that might help. 1. Make it correctly in the first place. Your filter should be up to date. Make it by running the water slowly through your machine since this amount of ionization of water takes some really serious exposure time of water to the electrodes, at least serious time compared to the ionization of drinking water. When you've done it right, it should have a chlorine smell to it because of the chlorine compounds that are created. Number two, if after a few days of storage it no longer has a strong chlorine smell, my personal suggestion is to throw it out. And number three, if you have a specific wound or skin condition for which you are using the water and you suddenly notice it's not working as well as it used to, even if it has a light chlorine smell to it, again, my recommendation is to throw it out. You might notice this if you're using it as a daily rinse for your dental health. When it starts to feel, smell, or taste weak, replace it with a new batch. This water is created by splitting water with a tiny, tiny bit of salt in it. It has a relatively short life measured in days, not weeks. I never make very much at one time unless I need it right then. The stuff is so inexpensive that my overall general rule of thumb is, if in doubt, throw it out. Then make a new batch. Whew, that was a lot of information. But now that you know how the 2.5 pH electrolyzed oxidizing water created by your Enagic machine works, you can apply that and get creative. Remember, there are no protocols with using this water. There are only ideas on how to use it to get the most benefits and hopefully we've been effective in helping you. What I've said here should not under any circumstances be taken as medical advice for any specific conditions or symptoms you might have. Always consult your health care provider if you have any specific questions about your health. You're now empowered. You've got the information. We sure couldn't tell you everything there is to tell, but we've given you a pretty broad basis of knowledge in a relatively short period of time. So think about it and apply the principles you've learned. Thank you for watching.